Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at a term called protonation, okay? So when we protonize something, what exactly does that mean? And I had a couple of requests for this because it was a little bit challenging um, for some people that were attempting it today, so I thought I would do my best and try to clear it up. So basically when we're looking at protonation, when something is protonized or it's protonated, it means that it has an abundance of hydrogens, okay? And whether we determine, how we determine if a molecule is protonated, whether it deserves those hydrogens, we have to look at pH and pKa. So it depends on the molecule itself, which is pKa, and the environment that is around it, okay? So a lot of the times we see this in our body with proteins and amino acids, okay? And that's because proteins all over our body are found in various pHs. And that's actually why we need to, in our bodies, we need to maintain a very strict pH, a very narrow pH of 7.35 to 7.45. And that's because all of our amino acids, you know, they kind of bounce around that range, but they stay within that pH. And that's so that we don't denature or we don't, you know, mess up our proteins too much. So basically, let's look at what it means. So if we look at the molecule itself and we say, okay, the pKa is higher than the pH or of, it, of its surroundings, okay? So if a pKa is higher than the surrounding pH, that means it's protonated. And that means it's going to have extra hydrogens. So in the case of NH, uh, let's look at this guy. So in the case of NH, all right, so this guy with just one hydrogen and two carbons. So NH, let's say we know it's pKa. The pKa is found to be higher than its surrounding pH, right? So pKa is higher. So that means, yes, it's protonated. So the protonated form of this guy means it gets extra hydrogens. So now it becomes NH2 plus, okay? And usually when you gain a hydrogen or a proton, you, get, you grab that positive formal charge. That's kind of the benefit of being protonated is you get that formal charge uh, plus sign with. So let's go through a couple examples. So let's go through this example right here. So this is a very common kind of amino acid that you will, uh, or not amino acid, but like peptide. So you'll kind of see this, um, this is kind of the basis of it. So you have an OH group, a double bonded O, a nitrogen, and an R group of some kind. Okay, so this can be kind of whatever. And let's go through a couple scenarios and say what the pH environments are and what the pKa's are, okay? So the pKa of our things are never gonna change. So the pKa of NH of this nitrogen is gonna equal 9.13. And the pKa of this oxygen down here is gonna be a P pKa of 1.83, so it's a lot more acidic, okay? And we're going to put this in different pH environments and see whether these guys are protonated or not. That's basically all we have to look at, is the pKa values and the pH values. Remember this, protonation, is it pH versus pKa? That's really all we need to look at, pH versus pKa, okay? So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And we're going to go through the couple different examples. So we have this guy, and then this one down, down here. Okay? So we have one, two, three. Okay? So how about our first pH of environment? So let's say, what would happen if this guy was in pH, if it had a, the environment had a pH of one? Very acidic. How about this guy if it had a pH of three? And this guy, what if I had a pH of 13? So very basic, not very acidic at all. What would happen? So let's go through, through these different circumstances and see whether these guys are protonated or not. So let's go through this first example right here. Okay, what would happen if we put this amino acid in the pH of one? Well, we just have to look at pH versus pKa. So the pKa of this one 
is 9.13, which is higher than our pH. And this guy has a pKa of 1.83, which is also higher than our pH. So remember our rule, if pKa is higher than pH, then we have propanate. So, let me make this green. So this guy is protonated, and this guy is protonated, okay? And we've actually already drawn it in its protonated forms. When you draw something protonated, it means it has its hydrogens. So the protonated form of this guy Actually, this guy should be, yeah, so this guy, sorry, this guy should have a positive charge. Actually, we'll try on the other end. Positive charge, positive charge, positive charge, okay? There we go. So, this guy has extra hydrogen, and it has a positive formal charge. And usually with oxygens, it either has a hydrogen and becomes an OH, or it has no hydrogen and becomes an O minus. Okay, so sometimes the formal charge can change like that. So this is a special case with oxygens. So when oxygen is protonated, then it has a hydrogen, and that's how it looks like. So protonated yes, protonated yes, and that's how they look like. Awesome. So that's for a pH of one. What if we did a pH of three? How would these guys change? Well, let's see. pKa versus pH. So, this guy still has a pKa of 9.13, and now the pH is 3, but this guy is still a lot higher, so yes, it's protonated. What about this guy? Well, actually now the pKa is 1.83, which is less than the pH. So is pKa higher than pH? No. So this guy is actually not protonated, unfortunately. Okay. So this guy is protonated, so it's already in protonated form, like we said before, which is good. But this guy is not protonated. So if something is not protonated, that means we don't give it those extra hydrogens. It's not very lucky. It doesn't get those extra hydrogens, okay? If you want to join the protonated club, then you got to make sure your pKa is higher than pH. So this guy is unprotonated or deprotonated. So that means it just has ugly little electrons, giving it a formal charge of negative 1. So that's its deprotonated form, okay? So protonated over here for O, oxygen, deprotonated over here for oxygen. See how they kind of change? But we'll do this last example right here. Our pH is very basic. It's very high at 13. Well, remember, pH versus pKa, nice and simple. We look at this one. Is the pKa higher? No. This pKa is no longer higher, so then now it's deprotonated. Is this pKa higher? No, this pKa is way lower than pH. So this guy is also not protonated or deprotonated. So now they're both deprotonated. So now we actually have to draw them a little bit differently. So how does that look like? Well, this guy, now instead of being an NH3+, plus, what is that? Um, NH3+, plus, now it's deprotonated form is just a regular old NH2. Very boring, right? NH2, that's its deprotonated form. And if we want to deprotonate it further, we take off more hydrogens, okay? So protonated, we keep adding hydrogens, and the formal charge may change. Deprotonated means we don't, so we take away hydrogens, okay? And we look at this guy, so pKa is not higher than pH, so this guy is also deprotonated. So remember we said the deprotonated form looks like this, and now it has a negative formal charge. So this is the deprotonated form of this guy. So if we look at, you know, different pH environments, this affects whether they're protonated or not, okay? So if we look at this example, our pH is very low, so our pKa's are way higher. So both of them are protonated in this guy. We change the pH a little bit. Now only the nitrogen is protonated. The oxygen is now deprotonated. If we change the pH even more. Now both of these are both deprotonated. None of them are protonated. They're both deprotonated. So we need to know how the deprotonated form looks like and how the protonated form looks like. 
And it's usually only for oxygens and nitrogens that we really have to worry about. So just memorize the forms of those guys. Hope that helps.